Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me for devotions. And if you're a part of New Life Church, great. If you're not and you just stumbled across us, we're glad you have us. And what we kind of do is take our weekend teaching and unpack it in a little bit further depth. In fact, this last Sunday, Pastor Doug talked about what it truly means to be great and that greatness happens at its core when we serve and love another person. And so Doug talked about that and looking at what the Good Samaritan did and then continued in passage um, as we've explored this. And, and now as we're kind of a couple days into this, I want to look at kind of this topic around a key idea that when it comes to serving and to giving, it rarely comes at a convenient or great time. I don't know if you know about this, but timing is everything. Timing's everything when you buy a house, when you get married, when all kinds of stuff. I mean, even thinking back that the first time you told someone you really, really liked that you loved them, you wanted it to be the right timing because the last thing you wanted to do is to say it and then the other person not say it back. So timing is everything. Have you ever said it even in the wrong moment? I mean, I love you, not the timing part. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, a matter of fact, I'll probably even say a couple months ago, I was getting off the phone with, with Pastor Doug, and I randomly said, as I end most statements with the, my family with, I love you, and I'm like, all right, Doug, talk to you later, love you, and uh, I'm like, hey, that came out really weird. I do love you, but, because timing's everything. When you're talking to your wife, ending the phone call with, I love you, is great. When you're getting off the phone with your employer, it's pretty awkward. Timing's everything. About two weeks ago, I was in the backyard working on a project at our house, and it's been an intense project, which required our kids to help, and all kinds of time has been invested in this and everything else, and something was bugging me, and so all of a sudden, I just said, hey, babe, tonight, can, before bed, can we talk about something? And she's like, yeah, but you can't say that, and then not tell me what it is. I said, well, I, I just don't think it's the right time. She's like, well, you definitely can't just say that. Now I have to know what it is. And so I said this line. I'm like, right now I'm feeling all this pressure to do this task. And I, I kind of don't feel like you're helping as much as I need. And, and she's like, do you know what I'm doing right now? And I'm doing all of this to help you and blah, blah, blah. And after about 20 seconds, she goes like this. She goes, you're right. It wasn't the right time. Timing's it. Timing's everything. And yet... Why is it when it comes to things like giving and serving that it rarely comes at the most ideal times? It rarely comes when I have time just in excess. It rarely comes when finances are in excess. It most often comes when potentially money's tight or time is tight. But let me think about it the other way. How many times in my life has money or time been in excess? And let me think about it. Oh, that's right. Never. It's never been an excess. So it's rarely that it's coming at the right time as much, or excuse me, wrong time, as much as when it comes to giving or serving, that we just don't really have created time for it all that much. And all of a sudden, I want to talk about how that timing works with something God's going to make available to us. And it's this. In uh, Luke chapter 6, he's going to teach in a unique way on both giving and serving. It says this. Do not judge, and you won't be judged. Do not condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it'll be given to you. And we see there's this contrast, like what you do, you're going to get in return. And it's kind of this back and forth, back and forth piece. So it's kind of like show love to another person, and, and other people will show you love. Be kind, and other people will be kind to you. And it's kind of this, it's kind of like this understanding that we get. But then it's going to go a little bit further. And this is what it's going to say when it comes to giving, or in this sense, even serving these these two things go hand in hand in this part. It says, give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Talked about forgiveness. Talked about condemning. Talked about all these things, forgiveness. But when it gets to the giving one, it all of a sudden begins to unpack it. And it unpacks it in a way that's unreal. It talks about the fact that it'll be um, given to us in good measure, pressed down, shaken, and all these different things, all these amazing parts of when it's given. And what do I realize when I read this? That I don't have the time or the resources, or kind of however I'm wording that, to not do this because the byproduct is too good. Do you get that? I, I know time's limited, but when we give our time to God, he gives it back in the same measure, both pressed down, shaken together, and pouring over. So why wouldn't I make time? 
When it comes to giving, he, he not only uses it in the same measure, but it's pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. Why in the world would I not give? In fact, I can't afford to not give or serve because the return is too good. It's too good. So I realize that timing isn't ideal, but, but the time to serve and give is always because the return is so, so, so great. So this upcoming week, here's my challenge. There you'll find an opportunity that to give or to serve, and you're going to create a reason for why it's potentially not the right time or the, the, the cost is too great or, or all these parameters. And my response is, why don't we chess, like test and check God in this area? Can we afford not to give or to serve? Because guess what? The return promise is too great. We always want the timing to be perfect, but here's the reality. It's always the right time to give and to serve. It's always the right time to give and to serve. And so this upcoming week, I want to pray that the right time will find you. Will you join me? Dear Lord, I ask that as we head into our day, into the upcoming week, our eyes and our hearts would be attentive on an opportunity to either give or to serve, to love and to care. And I realize that it's probably going to come at an inconvenience when we're in a hurry when potentially a life is overwhelming, when our to-do list has been so great and to add another thing just seems like, like too much. But Lord, when it comes to this one area, we can't afford not to. Because I believe that when we give time in this area, you give us time back. When we give resources in this area, you bring resources back. And Lord, we don't do it just so that we give. Lord, we do it because living under your blessing is the greatest life always. And so it doesn't mean that it's always kind of working out in our favor or any of these. We're not going to turn this into some mystical, get what we want in return. No, we just realize that the blessed life happens when we trust you with everything. And when is it the hardest to trust you? When we're lacking. And so how much we have, time or money, is not a determining factor for us giving. It's trusting you with what we have. And Lord, realize that you are going to press it down, shake it together, overflow, pour it into our lap. Because you, you, you are a good God. We give you glory and praise in your name. Amen. Hey guys, have a great week. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully on one of our campuses, both Dublin at 9 a.m. and at Alamo at 9 and 1045. Bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Is that all right? Right around 740. Sweet.